framework. So let's create a basic um, Next.js project and uh, uh, look at the folders and the project structure, how it is, and uh, try to understand um, uh, all the folders and uh, uh, files under the basic uh, Next.js project. And this is the Next.js um, uh, website. Um, so, if you see the first requirement is Node.js 18 or later that we need. So, in my computer, I have Node.js 20. So, there is no issue. If you don't have Node.js installed, you need to go to the Node.js website and uh, download the Node.js. Okay, you can download the Node.js from here. The second instruction is how to create the Next.js application. This is a command. So let me create the Next.js application. So it is asking whether I want to use the my app as a project name. I'll just say hello world as my project name. And it is asking whether I want to use the TypeScript. Yes. Whether I want to use the ESLint. So this lint is going to, while writing the code, um, if there is any uh, coding mistakes, okay, it will write away alert and show that there is a error in that uh, code so it will alert while developing itself if, if you use ESLint so I want to use it and it is asking whether we want to use the Tailwind CSS or not with the, it is one of the latest uh, CSS framework and uh, it has too many features compared with bootstrap so I just want to import this right now and uh, do you would you like to use the source folder of course I want to keep all of my uh, files under source source folder so the next one is app router. So it is asking whether I want to use the app router or not. So basically Next.js has app router and page router. So which router we want to use? It is asking I want to go for the app router right now. And it is asking to customize the alias I don't want to. Now it is creating the first Next.js application. If you see the dependencies, React, React DOM and uh, Next.js. So these are the important. So internally, again, it is using React only. Let's wait for a couple of minutes to create the Next.js application. So now the application is started. And let's check what exactly it is rendered. So it is running on 3000 port. So now if you see, this is the uh, hello world application for Next.js. Let's make some minor change and see how this is going to behave. Uh, so it is giving the instruction to update the page.tsx. So let's open that. So this is the page.tsx. So if you see get start started by editing. This particular file, this is a message and there is a Next.js icon image. Okay, for now, let's just remove all these things. Okay, it is completely empty. Now it is empty page. Let's simply add a div. So now this is the first text that I printed. So now let's understand the folder structure. So the page.tsx right away you understood now 
this is a home page when we start the application by default this page is going to be rendered from here we have to continue so this is the main page the first page okay so the next one if you see dot next this particular uh, folder is a compressed version of this particular application when we start the application it generated that uh, specific uh, dot uh, next uh, folder to uh, make the application uh, up and running in local so it can be deleted we can delete it again when we run the build again it will generate so no need to worry about this particular folder okay and the minified version of this hello world application it will have the second folder is node modules so of course this particular uh, folder will have all the dependent libraries that are downloaded for this application to run uh, so so these libraries are coming from the package.json the entries are in the package.json okay so now if you see these are the libraries all these dependent libraries libraries are downloaded to this node underscore modules folder okay and we can still delete the node modules file again if you run npm install it will again uh, download all these um, um, libraries or packages for the local application to run okay so the next one is public so if you see we have svg other icons and also this is the place this is a folder where we can keep the static files like images or videos or this type of uh, static content that will go into this particular public folder okay that is the purpose of this particular public folder so the next one is source and app okay so this particular source this is a major file folder where we keep and write all of our components and every code change that we are going to make as a developer inside this particular folder we'll come back to this okay now this this particular one there is no significance for this okay git ignore if you want to ignore certain files when we push this code to git so that's what we uh, that's what we have in the git ignore file so the next one is package.json package log json this is a, a replication replica of package.json but it's it, it will have the exact version of the uh, library that is used in the current application so that is the purpose of package lock and package.json it will have all of the dependent important libraries and uh, supporting libraries entries and its versions but if you but what exactly is the number version that is downloaded it will maintain within the package log.json and also along with this if you see we have the scripts these these are the scripts that we use to run the application or build the application or lint the application lint when we run npm run lint it will look for the uh, of look, look for all the um, uh, syntax errors or syntax is syntax issues in the application and it will list okay this is the purpose of the package.json okay now if you go back if you see this tailwind config this is a tailwind uh, css framework configuration it has all the tailwind related uh, css configuration okay and we don't uh, often make the change here so it is showing if the the content will be part of the src pages components or app right now we don't have pages or uh, components we just have app so it will be applied only to these folders uh, so we are saying this CSS should be applied to only these folders, the files under these particular three um, packages. So the next one is TS config. Um, since we selected uh, to use the TypeScript, so for that reason we need a TypeScript configuration file. And uh, when we run the application or build the application, it will use this particular specific um, uh, uh, compile compilation options and it will build the application accordingly for typescript files and once these are done so if this is the first page and this is the layout it will take care of the layout of the particular application next is application on the uh, viewport any it will render automatically according to the viewport um, so then the most important folder is this src folder okay src and app folder so this is where we are going to create our 
pages and everything it will go under this particular piece okay so src uh, and under app so there will be one more folder that will be coming as a pages so this should go on top of the src okay now under src we have app and pages so all the uh, pages will go under this particular folder all the uh, server side uh, uh, server side apis that we want to add server side logic that we want to add or uh, server side routing that will go under api under the uh, uh, that will go under the app and all the pages will go here if you want to use a page based routing we have to keep the pages here and if you want to go for the um, uh, angular router we have our uh, angular router we have to keep the files under this particular one hello everyone welcome back in this video let's look at the basic nextjs routing using link and uh, use router so right now i have a blank application blank nextjs application there is nothing and uh, let's start writing the code and understand the link versus use router with the code example so nextjs follows a page based uh, routing so all the pages should go under src folder so let me add a folder saying pages okay so this app and pages should be in the same um, level so within the pages for suppose i want to have a departments.dsx file and within this we got it like a okay within the pages so I'm creating a departments.tsx file and within the pages itself I'm creating courses.tsx so any file that is directly referred um, in the pages file pages folder you can directly access with the courses with the departments tsx so okay let's write this code and understand how we can route with a link and a user router so first start with link So link this is I'm using next link here okay and I'll just name it as a home home screen and I'll add two more second one is to navigate to departments and the third one is to navigate to courses okay to navigate to departments all I need to do is departments. So under pages, just departments. If I hit department, this file name and this URL path should match. Okay. The next one is courses and it will route to that particular courses. Okay. Let me just write some basic code in this two files and we'll return simply departments file. Add it up. Oh, this is a courses. Okay, courses file. So this is a courses navigation. When we navigate to courses, we should be able to see courses file that string. And for departments also, we'll add some basic message. Okay. Now let's go to the UI. So now we have these three. Let me add a CSS just to align and look like a link. I'm just adding a Tailwind CSS class just to look like a hitch reference. So now if you see we have three links, let's click the departments. Now if you see it is routed to the departments file. And now I'm clicking courses. Now if you see it went to courses. So this is how the basic routing works in uh, Next.js. So the pages should go under pages folder and the navigation name and the path of file name and the path of the uh, routing should match. So courses, it is courses, departments, it is departments. Okay. This is how we can route using link button. Okay. Now let's use, um, use router and uh, try to navigate. Let's add 
couple of buttons here just to navigate to two pages so I'll just say two departments navigation two courses navigation and of course we need on click so with this on click So I need to prevent the default default behavior of button first okay so e dot prevent default now I'll let it navigate to my function so I'll add this function I didn't add it the function yet so I'll add navigate to and the path name uh, give since this is departments I'll give departments here I'll copy this and set the same thing to courses so I'll set this courses here so that means when I click this button to departments I want to navigate to departments page and uh, when I click courses I want to navigate to courses okay right now we don't have this navigate to function so that's why it is throwing error. Let me add this. And uh, before this, I need a. So use router. I need. Okay. And, and I need a function. With this name. And path to navigate. And within this, what I'll do, router dot push, and I can pass this particular path so that it will navigate to that particular path. So, what I did was, so I added a couple of buttons here. Since I blocked this uh, button default, uh, uh, I blocked this button default click event and instead I want to navigate to this particular function and with this parameter and the same function with this parameter when we click courses okay when we come to come to this particular function since I passed path whatever the button that I clicked that value will come and I'm using use router of next router and pushing this path so that it will navigate to that particular page okay let's check Okay, we need to use the next navigation okay instead of next router now if you see we have two buttons okay let me add um, uh, tailwind css to look these two like buttons so i copied um, the button css from tailwind no need to worry about the css right now let's focus on the functionality so now i added button css now it, it is the visibility point of it looks good so now i have this button and this particular button when i click this one it should go to departments now if you see it is navigated to departments and when i go back when i click courses it should navigate to courses okay at the same time when i click departments it is navigated and courses it is navigated okay so basically so the thing is this is a basic next year's navigation okay if we don't have any parameters that we are passing to these particular files when we navigate so this is how you can directly refer under pages and uh, use this particular page name or file name as a path and it will navigate okay but if you want to pass a specific parameter when we navigate to courses if you want to pass course id okay so that for that type of scenario the routing structure is going to change let's look so in the previous video, we noticed um, straightforward navigation uh, from the link button as well as uh, using the router.
in Next.js. Okay. So if we have only single level um, routing, this is working. But for suppose if there is a scenario where you want to pass a like a department number. Okay. For this type of scenario, current page routing won't work. Okay. Or even for the same scenario, if you have a courses and if you have a course number, okay, this won't work. And at the same time, if you have departments by department, then courses by course number. So this will not, this is not working. So let's write how we can create these routes using Next.js. So this is multi-level uh, navigation. Okay. So to accomplish this, so we cannot keep this same folder structure. It won't work. Okay. To accomplish this, what we need to do is we have to create a folder for departments. Okay. And another folder for courses. This is the first step. Okay. The next step is under departments, create one more folder called department ID. Okay. This will be the parameter under again under courses, create a folder called course ID. Okay. Now we have courses, course ID folder, departments, department ID folder. Okay. The next step is moving this courses to course ID section, moving this departments to department ID section. Okay. The folder. Now it is under courses and it is under department. Now we cannot still access these files using these names. Okay. Now it will, it will not work. Okay. Let's test. Okay. It is not working. It is not working. Okay. For this type of scenario, when we are moving under courses and course ID to access courses, uh, to access course ID, I need to change this one to index.tsx. Okay. And this one also index.tsx. Okay. It will go based on the folder structure. Now, if you see, Department won't work, okay, but department ID, see, depart with the department ID, it is working, okay. Now, the same thing for courses under navigation to a specific, okay. I didn't, let's see, do I add it? Department ID, course ID. Is it on top of course, courses, course ID and index dot tier six. Okay. Oh, it is courses. Okay. Now it is working. But if you see courses is not working at the same time, departments is not working. So we want to have a navigation to departments as well as department number right for this scenario first for the departments we need uh, on top of departments we need another index dot tsx okay so one index dot tsx for departments second index dot tsx for department id so when we hit departments this index dot tsx is going to be called when we hit departments and department ID, that's when this one will be called. Okay. Now, now we will say department ID content, this one and this one. Okay. This one department main content. Okay. The same way for courses also. Now we have one index now on top of the courses. Again, index dot tsx. Okay. Now, this one 
courses id content this one now this will be course main content okay let's check the navigation now it should work okay so now when we hit department main content is working courses main content is working okay now if you want to check departments is working if you see department id content also working now okay at the same time courses and course id content also working okay now this is the second level and third level if you want to make it select departments and the department id so within that departments there will be multiple courses and course id so if you want to make this particular api working okay because department will have multiple courses and department will have department id and under each department there will be multiple courses and each course will have its own id okay to make it work okay it should be nested okay courses total courses related navigation piece should go inside the department id folder okay now let's see now we have this this particular piece is courses right now this courses should go on top of department id okay now i copy pasted now if you see under pages departments department id courses course id when we hit this its course id content is going to be rendered let's check course id will consider like a we'll write it like this department okay this is 1 2 3 courses 1 to 3 okay this should print when okay when we navigate to this particular url now it's already printed if you see so departments department id courses course id okay for that reason it is navigated properly so we looked at single navigation with id navigation and uh, inner segment also okay if you see so you should understand all this route page page routing should go inside pages and it should have the main folder if they if you want to route to the main folder this main folder should have its own index file to display and if you have a id of that specific folder we have to keep it in the brackets and again it should have its own index and under that if there is multi level routing same folder and its folder id and its own index every route should have its own index so this is how the multi level routing works in the previous session we looked at uh, different levels of routing now let's look into how we can get hold of the route parameters in the component okay for suppose when i click departments and enter department id okay how can i get hold of this inside the component right now the parameters is empty i want to get hold of this particular parameter inside the component let's look at how we can do it so it will be under departments and department id and its own index file okay now so under department under departments okay department id and its own index okay this is the department id level component okay let me change it to department id so that there will be no confusion and even the course also course id okay now i am under department id section okay so right now if you see this url under departments there is a department id i want to get this department id and print it onto the con onto the pay, uh, component okay in real time scenario we use this id and we may 
be making a api call to get the department data or courses data it depends okay for that reason we need to get hold of it to get hold of it first and foremost thing we need to use the router use router okay use router from next router okay this router will have the control on the parameters so this router dot query dot the parameter is under the name of department id so for that reason we have to use department id okay and we have to keep this like this okay this is a department id okay that we want to get hold of it under department id component okay now let's see so if you see there is a department id and it is captured at the component level now if you change it to any number okay enter it will get hold of it okay this is how you can get hold of the this particular department id okay now let's look at so this is the department id and let's go to courses and i'll say 3 to 1 okay now courses okay now let's check how we can get hold of this one first then we'll check how we can get hold of this one as well as this one so let's start with course id okay to get hold of the course id okay let me just go to the course id index file okay this one within this again same thing we need to import the router use router okay and uh, router dot query dot here course id okay why we are using course id because this is the parameter okay course within these brackets whatever the parameter name is there that is the parameter okay now let's check under parameters we will say course id value okay now if you see the parameter course id 3 to 1 is captured okay now let's see within this course file itself how can i get hold of the department also okay now it is same and it is very simple and straightforward let's replicate the same and change it to department id okay it will get the department id as well okay let's just test this okay now if you see department id 1 to 3 courses id 3 to 1 it is captured okay now let's change this number from 999 department id 111 course okay now if you say department id changed course is changed so this is how we can get hold of the route parameters in next case okay for suppose if there is a scenario where i have these like this this these many number of parameters okay i don't if i if i know that there is only one parameter here under courses okay like 111 is the only one parameter okay for that scenario i added it like brackets and course id okay but if there is a scenario where we have like like 999 and you don't know it can be n number of parameters how do we handle that specific scenario okay for that scenario all we need to do is it is very simple so course id is capable of getting hold of single course id right 
now if we rename this particular one instead of course id three dots okay and i am saying parameters okay and this name can be anything it's it's not go it shouldn't be parameters or params okay you can give anything here okay in this we can give anything it will be tied to that particular uh, property whatever the property that you gave okay now since it is params i can use params here okay now when i use this params anything beyond this particular url okay will be captured now let's check if you see under course id 111222999 okay all these parameters came as a array okay i i am able to capture all these parameters if you see okay even if i can add n number of parameters here it will still capture okay why it is captured because after courses okay after courses in the url after courses what i am saying just capture anything as a under inside params okay for that we have to give three dots within the bracket three dots and any name that you want to use okay it is not mandatory to use a specific where parameter name you can use any name here okay it will capture to that particular parameter name and you can directly use it here okay this is how you can get hold of the single parameter or multiple parameters or n number of parameters like this in the so route grouping meaning um grouping related uh, pages together into one specific folder and uh, routing um to that specific folder okay so let's start writing the code to understand this better okay so in the app folder i am creating a, a login folder and within the login folder i am creating page.tsx okay so to access so again one more thing in this again i am creating register folder and within the register folder i am creating page.tsx okay let me just add this basic code we don't need a link okay now this is register page okay that means registration page and uh, here it will be the login page okay now we have two pages okay let me just say route it to route it to login page and let's add routed to registration page okay now we have two specific path let's check whether they are working so login is working register also working okay let me just make some minor change let's add couple of link buttons to push this to navigate instead of directly hitting the url in the browser okay it's reference to login and uh, one more for registration let me format it
okay now we have two link buttons okay so now let me go to the main page so i have two link buttons okay like when i click login it is routed to login page and when i click register it is navigated to registration page okay so in the real time project there will be too many files too many components it's not going to be just one or two files or one or two components so when we have too many components um in the application so we need to at least group some of the related components into one folder so that we can properly organize the um, total number of components in the project okay so for that we need to use the route grouping so to add a route grouping since this is um, login and registration both are related to the authentication right so for that let me just on the app folder i'm creating a authentication folder okay within the authentication i'm moving the login and the registration complete files okay so i moved so within the authentication we have two right now okay let's check whether this is working okay for this to access authentication okay there is a spelling mistake okay let's validate so now using authentication it is routed now using authentication it is routed okay but since i just grouped it if you have multiple groups better not to have that uh, group uh, folder name in the url right in this scenario we grouped login and uh, registration components together but i don't want to uh, show this um, authentication string in the url okay for that what we can do is we can simply keep this authentication string folder folder name in this format okay if you do this okay you no need to use this particular authentication string in the url okay let's validate with the string whether it is working or not okay see if you see now with authentication the route is not there not available okay now since we grouped it this in this format so we can avoid this authentication and it will still navigate to that specific login okay now let's remove and now if you see it is properly navigated okay login as well as register okay the way it is working so in the real time project production applications we will have too many components and we need to organize them into groups okay since login and registration both are related to authentication so i grouped these two um, components into authentication folder and and uh, i added this the, i changed this folder um, name from authentication and kept it in the emphasized you know this particular format so that when we want if you want to navigate to this particular page we no need we can completely avoid this piece in the url okay that's how the group route grouping works let's look at how we can intercept a route and uh, render the different page by intercepting in between okay so for intercept to to intercept let's so let's understand what is inter intercept first okay so let me add two folders first page and second page folder okay in the first page i'm adding page dot tsx and also the second page 
page dot txs tsx okay now let me just add the basic content just the second page and first page okay let's just print first page here just print second page here okay now to navigate to this okay let's let's add couple of link buttons here So the first page link and uh, the same one for second page. Okay, let's check first whether this routing is working. Okay. On the main page we have two links first page okay and the second page okay the routing is working but let's look at now let's look at the um, intercept okay so to intercept okay let me just push this to first page okay now under the first page there is a second page so the routing for second page will be this first page works but the second page won't work okay okay second page won't work because there is a the first second page went inside the first page okay now so let's change this button here let me Let me add this also. Now it should navigate because second page is inside the first page. Okay, first page is working. Second page also working right now. Okay, now let's write the intercept, intercepting feature. And when we click second page, instead of going to second page, we will try to navigate to different page. Okay, by intercepting. To intercept the second page, what we need to do is here on the first page let me just copy this same folder name for the second page and on top of first page i'll add a dot here and the same second second page folder structure and within this i'll create a page dot tsx okay here I'll add this is intercepted second page okay so basically when we click the second page in the previous before adding this folder it was routing to the second page which is of this okay just printing second page but now since we added intercept feature that means the same folder and the dot here within this uh, brackets okay now let's see how this is going to work okay check the first page routing is working the second page when i hit the second page if you see first page then second page instead of this now it is intercepted second page instead of instead of displaying this this content it is displaying the intercepted content why because because of this particular intercept okay this is how this is how you can intercept a page in next js okay but now when i refresh it okay now if, after i refresh now if you see it went to second page okay it will intercept only for the first time okay again let's go back when I click it, see now it is intercepted. But when I 
okay if you are navigating from that button it is intercepted button click but after that the second time when we refresh the page it is directly went to the second page okay this intercept it will intercept and display something or perform some action and then it will navigate to the actual page which is second page okay that's how the uh, intercept works okay so basically intercept can be used intercept page can be used for suppose if 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 this particular second page has some api call uh, to fetch some data and display on the page okay if you already know that it is little bit delayed for some few seconds because of the api call okay for that type of scenario you can simply throw this intercepted page okay saying second page is loading okay once the content of the main page is second page is ready that's when it, you can navigate to the um, second page and you can get rid of a intercepted page so that's let's look at uh, the parallel routing in next js so the purpose of parallel routing is um, so when there is a situation where you want to uh, uh, load multiple components into, into a single component and uh, they are completely independent of each other um, so that uh, even if there is some problem with one component other leftover components are going to be still rendered and working as it is for, so for that type of situation we have to go for the parallel, parallel routes and at the same time majority of our real-time production applications will have this type of parallel routes definitely um, instead of having a single page so let's look at how we can implement this with the code right now i have a blank application okay so it is running on 3000 port and there is nothing so let's start by writing the parallel routes so i am going to create a folder called dashboard and within this folder i want to add a login folder on top of this dashboard i want to add at the rate register so at the rate anything starting with at the rate that means that is a parallel route okay along with this i'll say guest okay these are the three and i'll create a new file which is page dot tsx this is for registration and for the login page dot tsx for the login and for guest page dot tsx so i created three files okay at the same time these are parallel routes okay along with this for this particular dashboard again we need page dot tsx file its own file at the same time i want to have all these three into a layout so for that again i need a file called layout dot tsx okay what we are going to do is we are going to load these three parallel routes onto the layout okay and internally it will render onto the page okay so the layout and um, the layout is going to be part of the dashboard okay let's see so to save some time i wanted to copy paste this code change uh, the html for these three and the layout on page so to save some time i added all these layout page guest page as well as login page as well as register page code okay it's just a plain html so let's focus on how the route works okay right now so this is the dashboard when we click hit dashboard guest login and register these three pages are going to be loaded onto the layout okay okay in this layout again along with page okay these three are parallel routes and if there is a problem with guest other two will still render and work on the page and if there is a problem for one of the component or two of the components at least one component is going to work so the, in the real time scenario okay let me check the dashboard so now if you see left side one is 
login right side one is registration bottom one is guest okay um these three are aligned in this particular file the layout this layout belongs to dashboard okay so in this what we are doing we imported all these three parallel routes okay these three parallel routes okay along with this just we, we just pulled imported these three and just displaying setting it in this particular uh, layout okay login and uh, register and guest okay so to save some time i copy pasted this uh, css and all okay let's try to understand this is the layout in this layout this layout belongs to dashboard when we hit dashboard url uh, it will go to the page.tsx okay it will take this header okay if you say this header along with this header since there is a layout so this layout will be rendered inside this particular page.tsx okay so in this layout what we have we included these three components and rendered here okay so the purpose of this type of parallel um, routing is for suppose if there is a problem for login okay for suppose i i i logged into this particular website to register okay i don't have an account so in that scenario even if the login page is not working i don't no need to worry i can still register okay no need to worry i can still register at the same time if there is a person who has who is already logged in uh, created account okay even if this registration page is not working still that's fine user can simply navigate uh, login and navigate to the application okay and if i am a just guest and i don't want i don't want i don't have a login at the same time i don't have any i don't want to register so i can directly uh, navigate using the guest and even if these two components are not working i don't no, no need to worry okay so this is a major usage of having parallel routes and um, so this is the advantage so let's just let's just what we will do is right now the registration okay i'll just remove everything so if there is a scenario if this is not loading okay still this won't load but these two will be still active and running so in real time production application this is one of the major scenario that we use um the routing this type of routing that we will definitely use because we are not going to use single page for every piece of application instead we always have a single layout with multiple uh, components in it and uh, we uh, develop the, uh, the real time production application in this format so this is the advantage of um, using parallel routes let's look at um not found a page as well as route grouping so not found pages are right now we have different navigations that we provided right and for suppose if the user try to type some random page currently you are seeing 404 okay not found so since we didn't configure any of the page for this particular specific scenario but next js itself is providing this okay for suppose if we want to return our own not found scenario and uh, meaningful content to the user how we can do it okay so let's look at it so basically next js providing a specific file naming structure for the for its application um, to follow right so to create a not found file also we have a file name structure called not hyphen found okay let's see how we can write it so it should go to app folder okay not found file should go to app folder and within this not hyphen found dot tsx okay in this file not hyphen found it should follow that 
pattern otherwise it won't work okay now let's write uh, let's ex export a component from this okay just a plain component not this one let me just copy something okay let me copy this okay this is a not found one so let me add some content to it okay let's say the page you are trying to access is not available or it is incorrect okay i want to display this particular message okay when the user clicks some random type some random path in my application i want to display this particular message now let's check okay okay now this is the main url and we have paths for these urls and now i am typing something random now if you see the message the page you are trying to access is not available or it is incorrect okay so if we specify not hyphen found dot tsx file okay next js is going to use this particular file to render if the path is not available okay 404 situation and if you don't specify this file it will have its own 404 screen and it will display okay that's why when i delete it okay now i just deleted the file now let's go back and if you see now this content came from next js it is not configured now because i deleted the file okay let's look at how we can create the api routes so uh, next js supporting complete full stack end to end application features and as part of this if you want to write uh, api methods and uh, connect the database and fetch the data and send it to the ui so this portion from the component to make the api call for a complete full stack application we need to create the um, api routes so let's look at how we can create the api routes and the endpoints for the component to make the call and get the data so let's focus only on creating the apis instead of uh, consuming the data and displaying on the page okay only the uh, api routes okay now i just added a schema file okay to connect to the database okay this is the local postgresql database that i have okay so this is the database and this is the url of the database which is running on my local and i created a table okay uh, called to do's and it has an id name username and create date so these are the four fields that we have so um okay so to see this data this is the table and currently i have two records okay right now i have two records in this particular table okay so now let's look at how we can write the um, apis to connect to the database and get the data okay this is called api routes okay to create uh, for this to connect to with the uh, uh, database i am using prisma library this is prisma client uh, that i am using okay i just started the prisma client entry in this index file okay it should be under the uh, src folder okay so to start with the uh, api routing so under the pages there should be a folder called api okay within this api whatever the files that you write next js considers that these are the api route files okay so to write a file api route so for suppose since i have a to do uh, table to read the data from so for that reason i'm just naming it as to do okay and within this uh, file okay within this i can add a file name index.ts okay so within this so when we call localhost 3000 api to do's it will hit this particular index file okay 
within this first thing i need to import um the next js request and next js response okay next js request and uh, next js api response so these are the two things that i need so request is to get hold of the request parameters and the response is to respond back to the client uh, from this particular method okay along with this to connect to the database i need a, a prisma client client okay prisma from i already included prisma in this i already created the prisma client here okay index if you go to this particular folder you see this is the prisma client that i added okay i need to make an entry of this in the package.json and create this prisma client this is same for any database okay now i imported the prisma client now i have both of this now i can start writing the actual function so i'll write a function export so default it will be a async function okay and uh, i'll name it as a handler it will get a request of uh, next js request api request and a response of next js response okay these are the two parameters okay within this i need to check the request method name okay if the request method is get okay i'll go inside this and if and okay for right now let's look at get okay we'll look at the other ones later okay in this first thing i'll just try to catch if there is any exception okay and uh, response dot status of uh, 500 this is server error okay and the json response is going to be the exception that i'll just return okay within this now i use the prisma client to connect to the database and fetch the records okay so since i get to do's as a response okay since it is a async function i use await and here i'll use a prisma dot to do's why I'm using to do's because in this Prisma client, this is what I mentioned in the table, the table name. So we have to use the exact table name. Okay. Dot find many. It will return all the records from the table. Okay. So once I get the rec records, I'll respond with the status code of 200 since the read is successful and the JSON content of to do's okay now since i have two records in this to do's table i should be able to get these two records okay to hit this api okay i have a thunder client here okay this is a api url why because api localhost 3000 api to do's okay when i hit to do's it should hit this particular index okay let's check now if you see i hit this particular api okay now i see these two records okay let me add one more record here okay okay i added third record okay the name is not saved okay i added one more record there are three records okay now let's check let me hit this see now i got three records okay this is how you can create the api route to get the multiple records okay now let's add one more method to get a single record okay now to get a single record okay in this api for this to get a single record i need to pass the id right to get the record okay now there is no api that is matching this particular uh, url okay 
So that's why we are seeing this issue. Let's create uh, the 404. Let's create how we can get um, create this API route to accept the parameter. Okay. So right now, since we have since we have index, so it is it will just handle only the URL that will match this. Okay. Anything like a get method, it will go to to dos. Post method also it will go to to dos. But put method, delete method, and uh, reading a specific record, it should get the ID. We can still pass the ID as part of the request body, but um, we can pass it as part of the path parameter right now. Okay. For this to accomplish, uh, all we need to do is we need to create a file. Okay. With this ID and the TS file. Okay. This is how you need to create a file. And within this file, again, we need we need these two okay along with this let me just copy the function as well okay since we are going to pass the id okay i'll note down i'll get this id from request dot query dot id okay so once i get the id i need to instead of find many now i need to uh, within the find many itself i can pass the parameter okay and saying where within this id will be to do id okay why I am converting it to number because if you see this is the integer okay for that reason I added I am converting it to the number okay now we have the function API to do's and ID okay let's validate this whether it is working okay so this is the API that was not working before we are passing this Let's check how many records we have. Total of three records. Let's get this first record. Okay. So it should get taking class. Okay. Now if you see, we got this taking class record. Okay. Now if you try the number two, we got the second one. And number three, we got the third one. And number four, we don't have. Okay. That's why it is empty. Okay, now let's add a delete method. So for delete also to delete, okay, to delete in this, let me duplicate this and change it to delete method. So now when I delete this one, hit one and delete, okay, it should delete the record. Right now, since we don't have any method that is matching to delete, it won't work. Okay, so to write the delete method, what we need to do is let's just copy else if if the method is delete. Okay, we get this ID and here it will be a delete method and uh, same ID that we pass. Okay, now it should delete the record when we call when we call to do's with delete of one record first id okay right now we have three records with one two three ids let's delete the first one okay let me cancel this one okay now i'm deleting the first record so now the record got deleted the again i'm returning the deleted record that's why we were able to see this particular delete content here, the deleted record. Now let's go to the table or let's hit this to do's and try to fetch. Now if you see first record got deleted, there are only two records. For the confirmation, let's refresh here in the database, there are only two records. This is how you can delete it. Okay. Now let's focus on how we can create a record. 
okay post record okay now let me just duplicate this one and change it to post okay the post should have a json body okay now we don't have an api to run this so let me create this since post api okay since post api it will have only until to do okay we pass the record as part of the request body so since there is no id passed here so for that reason it will go to this particular class okay now else okay now if the method is post okay now what we need to do is from the request from the request we need to get hold of the um, parameters okay right now what parameters that we have so id is id is auto generated created it is auto auto generated okay why they are auto generated because in the schema i said default auto increment default now it will take the current time stamp so for that reason i need all i need to set is only the name and username okay to do name and username so right now the name and username only these two fields i need okay that i can get from request body since this is a post call i'll get these two properties from the request body and here to post a record all we need to do is create okay within this we need to pass the data okay to pass the data i need to pass these two since id and created it properties are going to be auto generated okay now post request is ready okay now let's create a record using this postman okay now i'm creating a record here i'll just say go to movies with kid okay let's check invalidation why okay now when i hit it okay now if you see id 4 and the record got created now let's let's go back to get call and fetch it now if you see the fourth record we, we received it even in the table let's refresh and you can see there is one more record created Or the one that we just created go to movies okay so this is how you can create a record okay now the last one is how we can post the record okay so uh, put the record okay the last one is how to put the record okay to put the record again um let me just duplicate this one let's go to put so when i put the record i want to pass this id at the same time in the body i want to pass the updated values okay right now let's get this let's get this second record okay i want to update this second record okay these two and it is put okay i'm adding this to i'm changing it to okay go to grocery i'm changing it to go to library and for first record okay or oh, there is no first record okay let's change do it for the second record in the put right now since we don't have a method it won't work okay now let's add the put method here okay else if okay now in this i'll say put method of course i i'm going to get the id from here okay 
once i get the id i need to update this will be update method and within this along with where condition i need to set a data to update okay so what i want to update i want to update this will be part of the request and again i'll get the from the body i'll get the name and the username okay these two we are going to update okay i'll pass like this okay now since there is a put method it will update these two values for this particular id whatever the id that is passed okay now let's validate this i have a put method uh, for the number 2 record so when i hit the number 2 right now go to grocery and shiva okay after i put it should return this okay let's save this now it is successful let me check the database okay now it is changed to go to library us learning hub okay and also let's get the same record and see this is updated now you see it is updated okay this is how you can write the uh, api routes in nextjs okay so basically let's try to recap so all we need is a database connection okay for that uh, i used a prisma client so i added the url and created a table okay if you it is already there in the postgres sql since i am using prisma studio i am able to directly see it on the browser okay it will it it, it should be there in the uh, postgres sql table also let me uh, open the pg admin Now, if you see the table, so the to do's table is here. Okay. And when I see it, there are three records. Okay. That are properly matching. Okay. This Prisma Studio is one more additional thing. Instead of connecting to database directly, we can see it here. Okay. That is the advantage of it. Okay. The same replica of the database. Okay. Same replica of the database. Okay, once we have the table ready, okay, all the changes, so the route, all the, as per Next.js, all the routes should go under pages, under API folder, okay. Since this is a to-dos table, I created a folder with to-dos and if I hit the any URL with API and to-dos, it will go to its index file and look for that method. And if I pass API to do's and some property, okay, it will go to this particular file. Okay, this is how the routing works in uh, Next.js. Okay, I hope you understood. If you have any questions, uh, ping me or message or comment in the YouTube uh, video. Also, I'll in the next session, I'll since I already have made the API, API calls, so now. In the next session, I'll write a component under call this particular APIs and fetch the data and display on the UI. We built um, API routes to create, read, and uh, update and delete the records um, using API routes. So we built um, these two classes to generate the APIs and we even tested uh, from the Postman here, the Thunder client. So currently we have these records and uh, so now, so we have all these APIs ready, up and red, uh, running and they are ready. So now let's write the Next.js component and uh, call these API routes and uh, get the data and display on the UI. Okay. If anybody joining this video uh, right now, please check the previous video where we built the uh, these APIs and uh, this is a continuation of the previous video. 
So let's just recap of what we have added previously. So we added a get method which will return all the all the records and uh, there is a post method to create this to do and uh, there is a uh, one more get method to just fetch specific record based on id and another method to delete a record from the table and one more record to update the record from the table in the table okay so right now in this the first code that we will write is fetching all the records from this api and displaying on the page let's start with that okay so as a first step we need to get all the to do's so for that i'm adding a set state for this it will be of a use state okay i'm adding a to do object i'll add it as a, i'll add an interface for this at the same time it is an array and here i'll add an interface called to do and i'll add the parameters name username of string and id of string right now okay so when we make when we get the posts okay i want to assign those posts and hold it in the to do's okay so right now we have this api call to get the to do's okay let's write the api call to get this data so for this we have to use use state sorry use effect okay the use effect and uh, within this we'll use fetch api and uh, the url will be api to do's and the parameters i'll just add a cache in not to cache it cache the data every request when i make i want to get the new new data at the same I, i i want to go and get the data from the table instead of caching it okay now then if i get the data i'll get a response and once i get the response of data i'll i think since it is a fetch it will return the i we need to call this json method to get the data out of it okay once we get this dot then we will have a data real data okay now once i get the data i'll say set to do so i'll set this data okay this is how we can make the api call get the to do's and set it to to do's so now we set it to to do's now this is available for the ui to load and uh, display on the ui okay if nothing i'll just return empty okay now we got this api we get the data we are setting it to to do's okay it's time to display this on the ui okay since i already have this ui okay built just the ui uh, layout okay i'll use this bottom piece here i'll try to display the data okay so to display the data we need to iterate this right now okay we, since it is a list so we need to iterate so for that i am using um, a list so within this list so we have a, it's a to do so we'll have we need to call map on top of map we'll get a to do and uh, once we get the each to do so within this we'll have to i'll just keep a track of a key a key will be to do dot id the id is going to be the to do to do id okay so and uh, within this i'll add a div to display so the class name would be i want to center align the data so justify between i'll highlight this data 
to do dot name and to do dot username okay why is this wrong it should be this one not this okay let me format it okay now we are able to iterate okay now it is displayed but it is not visible let me uh, arrange the uh, font styles and all to see it uh, better Let's change this name to todos okay that would be better okay so we we got one two three four todos we got okay let me just hit this api and check how many records are there okay you see there are four records okay all these four records are displayed on a page okay these are the four records watching youtube videos go to movies updating and shiva okay these four records now this is how we can make the api route call and fetch the data and display on a page using use effect okay um, let's understand so we need a state property which will hold the list of todos for that reason we used use state and uh, set it here and it will be of array so for that reason i created an array uh, an interface and uh, attached it here array of those records i'm making the fetch api call i'm not caching the data when i get the data i'm setting it to this to this once it is done the data will be ready so i'm i took this to do's and iterating and displaying on the page okay this is how we can read the data and display on the page okay now let's work on uh deleting okay let's delete a record so right now we have this record let add, let's add a delete button here and delete the record okay uh, to delete we already have a delete api okay so let me just update this piece okay here i'll add a button and when i click the button when i click the button okay what i want to do is i'll call this delete to do method since i already have to do id here i'll get hold of the to do id okay i'll add just a basic class name for this button to look better so red color since it is a delete will add a red color button um and the text would be white okay and a rounded button okay uh, we'll just add delete for this the button name okay if you see we got the delete button now when i click this delete i want to delete when i click this delete i want to delete this, this record when i click this delete i want to delete this one okay that's how we, we added now let me add this delete method here okay now here so i'll add a async function it will be async function and it will get the to do id okay within this once i get the to do id i'll directly call the fetch api so fetch api call within this the api to do plus the id okay and and we'll pass some parameters again i don't want to okay i don't need a cache for this because it will delete and the headers would be uh the content type It will be application by json okay and uh, the method name is delete okay it will delete the record so once the record is deleted okay let's add this one once the record is deleted i want to refresh the page or 
refresh the page to display the only the leftover records okay so this is how you can write a delete function to delete a record okay now i want to add this refresh page okay so to if i want to refresh the page okay i need a function and within this okay it will be a constant that i used okay within this i need a use router i need to get hold of the router so for that i'll use the router it will be of a use router okay on top of this router i'll call the reload if this reload is not working we can call location dot reload okay this will be of javascript let's see which one is going to work okay so i'm so what i am doing here when i click this delete button okay next is router was not mounted this should be navigation okay next navigation not the router okay let's use for now let's use the location to reload so when i click this delete button i want to delete this record from the table i want to make the api call to delete api call and refresh the page okay now let's inspect okay before that if you see for this when i click the button i am calling this to do method uh, delete to do and i am passing the id once i have id i am calling the delete method api to do delete record okay we if you see the delete function this is what we have api to do okay this is to do okay it's not a to do it is to do okay now let's run this and see okay i want to keep this window okay when i refresh the page on the page load if you see we got this data okay now i'm clearing this out and let's put it to the side okay now i'm deleting shiva test if you see shiva test got deleted there are only three records right now okay if you want to check you can go to the thunder client get all, right now we have four right it should be three okay the record got deleted okay this is how you can call this route api and delete a record okay creating a record and updating a record okay so let's go for update first okay anyway we need uh, that full form for update along with this delete button i'll set this in front to update or edit okay edit to do if i want to edit i need id name and a username to edit it so when i click this button i am going for i'll just set this id to the back okay so this is edit to do let me create a function so right now you can see it like this this is how it is the edit i think edit i think better not to use the red button so let's use a plain different button for edit let's remove this um, red to blue okay now this is the edit button let me close this for now okay we have this edit button when i click this i want to edit it okay so right now let me add this edit function okay within here i'll say this is edit to do and we have a name of string and the username of string id of string okay it will be of async function within this how we edit right so first thing we need to set this to we need a form to hold this data to edit okay for that reason let's create a form 
okay let me set a form so constant i need a form okay and i'll say set form okay this form should be of since the form will have same data i'll use this to do and within this it will have three fields that are of name empty this is the initial state so the username empty and the id as empty this will be initial form okay so all the values will be empty okay now i have a form okay when i edit it edit it i want to set these three properties here within this object i'll set these values whatever the value that is currently that should be currently edited so i'll set these three values here the name and the username and id okay but uh, what is going to happen now nothing happens because there is no form to hold this data okay for that reason let's build a form okay let's just build a form so let me within this we need a form okay this is a form and within the form uh, okay within the form i need input type text and the placeholder as a name and the value to hold it should be of a form dot name and when there is a change so on change we'll get the we'll get hold of the event and once we get hold of the event we'll set this to form what are the value that is that got updated okay a form target dot value that we are going to set and once this is done okay on change this is properly closed set form Let's see why it is throwing that error. Okay. Now let me add the next field. This is the name, and this will be of username, the second property, and this will be username. Oh, okay. Here, this is issue. and here it will be of name let me just push it to next line for viewing purpose okay so right now i have a name field username field okay to hold this okay along with this let's check the ui this is how it is okay okay let me align this it is not looking good let me add the css class also i need to add a form submit as well so for let me just set the css for this auto minimum width minimum width of uh, 25% this is of um, tailwind css and um, for now you don't need to worry about uh, the css okay i'll give 6 flex items flex column and uh, items stretch okay let's check okay now the css is fixed okay now when i if i have username and username uh, name and username i need to submit okay store so so the same form we are going to use it for 
new event also sorry new to do also so that's why for that reason okay we need to i forgot to add this uh, submit function so on submit i'll get hold of this event okay i'll prevent the default and at the same time i'll call my own form submit function and uh, it will have a form okay we'll we'll add this function later right now when i want to reuse the same form for um edit as well as a new new creation new to do creation so for that reason so what i'll do is within the form i'll add i'll, add, I'll set whether this i'll just have one boolean value here i'll say is this a new to do or editing to do okay whether i am in the new record mode or edit mode okay here i'll have a boolean value say true or false okay um for that i need a boolean and the default value i'll set it as true okay that means so if this is a new to do i'll clear the form if it is edit i'll set the edit data okay so in this here i want to add a condition here to show and hide buttons based on new or edit scenario okay for that reason i'll just push it if it is a if it is a new to do okay if it is a new to do else okay if it is not new to do and i want to perform i want to display some other buttons okay so if it is a new record i want to say the button name as save okay save button i'll just say plus mark here so i want to save this record okay i'll just say it is of a type sorry type submit the type is submit and i'll set button styles here um i believe i already have buttons here let me just copy the same css for this button instead of writing it again okay now let me check okay there is something wrong here let me see see you to do okay okay let me format it so this one save button so if it is a new i want to show it like a save record and if it is editing scenario i want to say update okay for that i need one more um, button so here this will be of if it is not new to do i want to say update the record i want to even show a button to cancel if i want to cancel update okay when when i click edit and i don't want to still edit it i can cancel it so to cancel again i'll use a red button and i cannot use this one if we need a on click to cancel it i'll can i'll call this cancel function here okay we okay, got it now now it will not throw any error okay now on click handle cancel function i want to change it to red and it will be of cancel okay so i'll add handle cancel function and a handle submit form submit Okay, let me add the cancel first. So this will be of function. I don't need a async for this since it is just a cancel. So I'll reset the form. If it is cancel, I'll just reset the form. 
so the empty records empty, empty state okay this is a reset and I'll say new to do to if I cancel it I want to make that form to create for a new to do create okay to create okay now what I'll do is I'll add a submit form submit function now okay I'm going to use the same function for submit and uh, edit if you see both are input type submit only but based on save or update I'll handle it accordingly okay if new to do is true that means it is a new record if it is false that means when I click update it will be update that's how I calculate okay now so it will be of async async function and will submit when I get the form data I'll get a to do object okay which is of this on the top okay and within this first thing I want to check is this a new to do call or is this update of to do for that reason I'll add I'll check if it is true or not okay else I'll write the update here okay now I'll just copy the existing function to create there will be no id for to create okay it will be a post method and along with this I'll say cache I don't want to cache this no store and along with this I need to pass the body because it is a post call I'll use json dot stringify of form data that is submitted okay this is how you can post the data once it is done I want to even refresh the screen okay I'll just call this oh, I already have a refresh okay I'll also set the form to re I'll reset the form okay reset the form because once it is created there is no need to still hold the data and if it is and if it is uh, not new record if it is in edit mode okay plus what is this it's a form form dot id so I need to pass the id for update okay at the same time body this will be same and at the same time I need this as put once it is put I'll set it at the same time I'll say set new to do to true because once it is updated I will make that uh, form to be available as a new to create a new record so now let's check so this is how it is right now we have two fields to save the record to edit and to delete okay now let me add one record okay it is to do test and today is April 5 okay this is to do test let's see now if you see the record got added okay this is a record that I just created okay now it is added and just to verify in the API see there is a record this is how we call the API routes in Next.js using Prisma okay the second one what we will do is we'll update this or we'll delete this record okay we already tested delete but let's delete it so record got deleted now it should have only three records okay we have three records now we have these these records now let me create a new record there are five records so the to do name is uh, morning jogging by okay with the kid I'm saving it now I got the record morning jogging with kid now I'll edit this record with kid and uh, family I'm adding instead of jogging I'm changing it to walking okay I'm updating it so now it got updated if you see morning walking with kid and family it got updated Let's recap and understand what you have what we have done so every api route should go inside api folder under pages and any name that you are going to give 
when you hit this particular API and to do URL, okay, it will go into this particular index file. Okay, for suppose if you see, this is the on the page load we are calling API to do's. Okay, when we say API and to do's, by default, since we are hitting only the folder name here, by default it will go to index.ts instead of ID. Okay, only until here. So that's why it went inside, and at the same time, we have even we set it is the by default if you don't set the method name it will be a get so for others we set method right we didn't set it by default it will be get okay for that reason it went to get method okay it went to prisma to do stable got all the records and responded okay that's how the re total records came okay now when i call delete to do api to do's okay api to do's then i i'm passing an id okay if i'm passing an id because it is id.ts, it will go inside this and hit delete method. Okay, within this, we have a delete method here. We got hold of the to do ID. Since it is a number in the data table, I am converting it to number and deleting the records. Deleting the record. Okay. So when I click edit to do, I am getting hold of these three values. Okay. And I am going to edit to do function. And I am setting for these three values to the current form and saying it is not a new to do it's not a new record okay when i click edit it is taking the values and setting it here and saying it is not a new record for that reason we are able to see the update button here instead of when i cancel here okay again it became like a new to do record with the save button okay when i cancel it what i'm doing when i click the cancel method function uh, cancel button i'm resetting the form and also i'm setting it to true it's a new record so for, since it is new that's why we are showing this save button okay so this is how we can create the uh, api routes using next js and uh, prisma so as part of this first we will create a to do page where we can create the uh, to do and we'll dispatch this particular to do to redux uh, storage and uh, in the other we'll create one more page where we can display the to do's and in this display page we will get the to do from the redux store and uh, display it okay as part of this it won't even refresh the screen since we are creating a to do and pushing it to store and uh, the store is available to all the children's of this particular application so we no need to refresh to display this uh, um, to do's list on the to do viewer page okay now let's look at how we can write the code for this i just created a blank um, next.js application it is a plain next.js application that i have and um, so also in this video i am using next.js uh, library which is uh, shard cn so for our components so this is the website and uh, i'll share the link as well okay and as first a step i need to include redux toolkit as well as react redux and redux persist so i'm adding these three to my project so this is the first step okay once i have this so the second step is within the src folder okay within the src folder i i'm going to create a folder called um, redux okay within this redux folder i'm going to start with uh, i just want to use an interface okay within this interface since I want to create an application called uh, to do, so I want to create an interface to, to get hold of this to do data. So for that reason, I'm creating a to do's and uh, I'm going to add a to do state to hold the bad data and I'll create one more interface. Okay called to do and within this i'll have 
a to do name which is of string and the description so it is a string and the person who created this to do will have a username and I'll have a created timestamp at what time the user is created this particular to do I'll name it as a string parameter and uh, along with this I'll add an ID okay so this is my interface okay so the second step is so right now I have an interface so I'll start by creating a um, store for this to do okay so for this within the redux folder i'm creating a stores folder okay within this store okay i'm creating a to do slice usually um, redux is a big piece of uh, state management uh, tool where it will have uh, slices of each type of data so right now since it is to do i am creating a to do slide slice okay so within this to start by writing initializing the state so initial state of the to do object will be empty so within this it will have a let me just import this okay within this it will have a to do state okay it will be of array okay so because we'll create multiple to do's so for that reason i'm added uh, we'll create multiple to do's and push everything into this to do's so for that reason i'm creating a to do state initial state as empty array Okay, username and created it and the ID okay this is my initial state of the to do's okay along with this I need to create a slice so I'm creating a to do slice and it will be from create slice okay so for this one there will be a name i'll just name this to do's i'll name it as a to do's and i'll add the initial state of this and i'll add the red user red users for this specific to do's list okay so, and when we call the within the red users i'll set the state set to do state and it will get the state as one parameter other one is action okay it should be this and this action will be of the payload action and uh, this payload will be of to do object okay so I'll just import this to do import the pilot payload action and within this once i get the new payload i'll attach this to to do's I'll push it to to do's list okay and the action dot payload so I simply created um, initial state of the to do it will be of empty array and I'm creating a reducer and setting the initial state to this um, reducer okay so this will be of a to do slice okay 
and along with this we need to export so we need to export these two so this set to do state equal to to do slice dot actions and we need to make export the to do reducer so the to do reducer will be of reducer okay so now we created a initial to do reducer let's create the actual main store okay so within the redux folder we'll create a file called store so this will be the global store and we'll merge the uh, to do reducer into this okay so it will have a store object and we'll have a configure store and within this we'll include the reducer and the reducer name would be to do reducer okay and along with this this is this particular middleware code is almost common across any sort of application okay get default middleware so the default middleware get default middleware and we'll say serializable check because we don't need to serialize okay along with this we need to export the root store sorry root state type of store dot get store so this is almost similar to any application where we are using this redux okay dispatch the type of store dot dispatch Okay, this will be same across different applications. Any applications where we are using reducer, reducer. So the only piece is this here. Okay, now we need to dispatch the app. Okay, so here export and dispatch. the use dispatch of app dispatch use app dispatch okay okay now the other one is app selector App selector within here so type to select
so this is the global store and uh, within this we included the to do reducer okay this is important okay so now the store the redux store point of view we are done now let's go to the ui portion and start implementing okay in the ui side i am going to create a file so i'll i'll create a to do in this class in this file so that's why i named it as create to do so within this so without wasting the time i'm just copy pasting the form okay let's keep this form this is to create the to do okay within this the major thing is so we need to first get hold of the dispatch from redux Okay, this dispatch should be of app dispatch. Okay, create the to do. We need to dispatch that particular to do um, using this dispatch. Okay, so right now let me just create a form. Set. So the use state of uh, this will be of to do. Okay, within this we'll initialize the form empty for empty properties and uh, to do name and. Uh, the description and username so this will be the initial data we are setting it to the form and the id is empty okay this will be the initial form When we load the page, we want to set this. Okay. Let me just push it. Okay. Now we have uh, the form, initial form. Okay. Within this, we created a plain form, right? Okay. We'll, when we submit this particular form, okay, we'll handle here. We'll get a to do as part of this form. And this this will be of I think function. So if you see in this form, I added to do name one text box description text area username to hold and uh, uh, submit. There is no ID, okay. And right now there is no timestamp also created it. Okay, we will create set the timestamp here. Okay. So when we submit here, we'll take this to do and I'll set the creator timestamp. Um, it will be of new date dot to local string and we'll take the um, US time. So we'll pass the time zone of America by New York. Okay, this will set the create a timestamp. Once we have everything ready, okay, we'll dispatch this data and uh, we'll call the set to do state and push this data to Redux. Okay, this is how we can push it. Now, since we already post it this is a new record so we will simply set this form to 
uh, default values again. Like we'll clear the form. Okay, we are clearing the form here. Okay, now we have the form ready to create the to-do. Okay, before this, since when we create it, it we are dispatching it to um, Redux, right? We are dispatching it here, but to access it in any other place or uh, to act to get hold of that, we need to include the global um, Redux provider in this particular page.ts. So, for that, let's create one more thing, one more file called Redux provider, or we can call it anything. Okay, TSX. Uh, within this it will be the same code across different applications so that that's why i'm just copy pasting this code and uh, it will be the root uh, redux provider and it will pass this uh, uh, store to the all of the children's okay and this root that we are going to use it in the uh, page dot uh, uh, tsx okay the way we are going to use it here is to use it um okay Need to use Redux provider. Okay. So this is how we can use the Redux provider. Let's check check how this is looking. So now we have a form to create the record, and when we create it, when we click update, okay. It will create the redux. Uh, it will create the uh, to do here, and once we create the to do, we are dispatching it to the uh, Redux. Now it is pushed. It will be pushed to the um, Redux. Now what we will do is once we get it, we now we need to display this. So for that reason, so I'll create uh, one more uh, TSX file calling to do display or to do viewer i'll call it okay this is a tsx file within this copy this page tsx here let me remove this and I'll call it as to do viewer okay now within this first thing to display the data i need to first get the data from um, from the redux okay so for that i'm using use app dispatch of state we'll get the state when we push it to these uh, when we push it to redux from here when we dispatch it is posted to redux and now it will be available here if we get hold of the state okay here state dot to do dot to do state okay Use dispatch. Okay, now this is not going to be the dispatch. This will be of selector. Okay, the dispatch will be where we are pushing it to the store. So now we have the data. Now it's time to display. So to save some time, now I'm copy pasting this code, which is simply getting this list of uh, to do's and iterating it and uh, printing it okay so there is nothing it is straightforward piece of you know any react application where we if we want to uh, iterate and display the data so this is how we will do 
to do store will have a list of records that are pushed to the store from here okay and uh, now i am able to iterate here okay now let me just check okay this is one place okay right now we have this create to do let me just add the um to do viewer as well here to display so now you can see so we have this to do creator and we are displaying the list of to do's here okay now let's test this okay okay i'm creating a walking to do walking is good for health and walk daily minimum of 5 miles okay and i'm saying shiva okay i'm creating it now if you see okay i created created this to do and clicked update right away this to do list is updated with whatever i created okay so the way it is working let me just reduce this to okay okay now if you see without even reloading right now when i click when i click update okay let me just change this update to create instead okay so what i am doing i have a form and when i click submit create so it will go to on submit and it will hit handle form submit within the form submit i am setting the create a time stamp and i am dispatching this to do record calling set to do state okay method when we go inside okay this is coming from to do slice okay within this to do slide slice so when we if you see set to do state when we call this method just let me just keep it side by side okay i am calling set to do state and passing the to do so i am calling this particular method okay when i call this one i'll get the state once i get the state oh okay i'll get the payload because whatever i post it will be part of the payload okay the action dot payload it will get this particular to do that i created and i am pushing it to to do state so this will be since this is array i am pushing pushing into it okay the initial one will be empty and now when i create it i'm setting it to the store so it is pushed to the to do state okay this is the first step now when i go to to do viewer what i am doing i am going to use app selector okay to get the state once i get the to state i'm getting all the to dos of to do state so this will be list how this is coming let's check here within this the app selector from here we are dispatching it the use app dispatch we use to dispatch that means to send the data to store use app selector to get the data from store okay that's how it it will work okay so um right now we are using this use app selector okay so this particular app selector is called part of the root state okay within this root state what we have we have a, a, a state of to do so it has a to do reducer okay that's how it will work and now when we let's go back okay so since we already have this use app selector and it has a state okay uh that is pushed from to do to create and now we have this list here and i'm displaying this content here i'm simply iterating and printing it okay 
now this is how it is it is working so now i'll create one more okay so i'll say read books for to gain knowledge okay i'll add this now if you see there is one more created so the way i i am creating it here and pushing it to redux store and in this particular page i am reading it from the store and displaying it here okay Let's understand how next js renders a web page onto the browser and uh, what are the different ways to render the pages um, and its uh, use cases in detail so now uh, let's start with uh, understanding what is rendering um, in general so rendering is the process of converting the code into usable and visual format of user interface uh, called as web page so rendering generates the web page and it, it will display on the web browser next is supports uh, both client side rendering and uh, server side rendering and uh, there are uh, different use cases for each type of rendering we will discuss and uh, explore those in this video let's understand what is client component in uh, next js so by default all the components in next js are server side components so if you don't mention uh, use client directive on top of the component page uh it will by default considers like a server component so to make it a client component uh, we need to use this um, use client directive uh within the component itself and it should be the first line uh, of the uh, uh, component class okay so to understand uh, what is client component so client components are the, the web pages that are pre rendered on the server during the build time and they will be directly served to the uh, user on the web browser when they request for it and once for the first time when the user navigate to that particular page the content won't change uh, in the subsequent uh, request to that specific page so it is already pre-rendered on the server during the build time so for that reason uh, the page will be much faster and quicker to parse and render onto the browser and every time subsequent request when the user navigate to that particular page so it will never go to server for to render again it will be by default passed passed on the browser side itself and it will it will render so for suppose if you navigate to gmail uh, login page so this particular page that you are seeing on the screen it is common for anyone who ever log into this particular page and navigate to this particular page so every person all over the world whoever want to log into gmail they should land into this particular page so this is common across anyone uh, throughout the world for that reason and there is no dynamic content in this other than the plain um, um, plain uh, google uh, logo as well as the sign in method message and uh, one text box and one button and there is one more button to create the account so this is plain html content so for this type of a page to render we no need to um, go to the server every time instead of on the first time during the build time itself in this particular page is pre-rendered on the server and as soon as the first user uh, now try to log into uh, uh, gmail it will render this page on the client side itself and for anyone whoever accessing this page it will be rendered directly on the browser side instead of going to the server completely so it is completely pure of a um, client side component and uh, for this type of scenarios we can directly use the uh, client side component so client side components for the first time they will generate out of the server and uh, once it it is passed onto the browser it will become independent of the server and it will be always passed and rendered onto the browser side itself and it will 
disconnect from the server and whatever the action that is performed on the browser side it will be parsed and um, right away it is uh, up, uh, updated the browser on the browser side itself for suppose if you see a, uh, a constant like uh, the counter okay so when you click a button to increase the counter so it will this particular type of action uh, to perform this action and increase the number of the count there is no need to go to the server it can be done only with the pure javascript on the browser side so for this type of scenario you can directly go for the client component so now let's look at server components so by default uh, next js components are server side components and uh, unless you mention use client directive on top of the page so by default all are server side components three different uh, ways to create the server side uh, uh, components using static rendering dynamic rendering and streaming these are the three types uh, of rendering server side component renderings that are possible in nextjs now let's look at one by one in detail so to start with the first one is static rendering so static rendering is very much useful for a type of a page where there is least dynamic content and maximum of static content for example a blog website web page where you see all the blog posts and once you uh, create a blog post most of the time we don't even update it we don't even change so for a blog that has multiple blog posts to display so there is no need uh, for us to create a um a uh, client component or any other other thing other than the static rendering so the static rendering since it is just a plain static content it will simply simply generate uh, during the build time itself and uh, it will be rendered onto the browser when the user request for it for the first time and uh, in the subsequent uh, uh, request it will be automatically rendered only uh, on the browser side there is no need to go to the server even though it is server side component but still there is no point of going to the server since this content is of uh, static rendering content so for suppose if you see this particular blog um, so where we have number of blocks on this particular page okay uh, for suppose if you click this and see this content won't change on daily basis so once it is uh, once this blog post is posted so there is nothing is going to change unless and until if there are any corrections during when we post for the first time we may need to make those corrections other than that this content whatever you are seeing on this particular page this content won't change so for this type of scenario we have to directly go for uh, static rendering um, so that it will be rendered for the first time on the browser on the server side uh, during the build time and it will be passed passed to the uh, browser on the first request and subsequent request will be directly served on the browser side itself and there is no dynamic content so there is no point of going to the server so this is the uh, use case for static rendering so when do you use static rendering so uh, for suppose if there is a scenario where you have only plain static content to render onto the browser uh as well as um the same content is displayed to any user whoever login uh, request for that specific page so for these two type of scenarios you can go for static rendering advantages of static rendering or uh, the page is going to be pre rendered on the server so for that reason the faster load time will be there when you access the page within the uh, fraction of seconds the page is going to be completely displayed to the user and it will give the overall best performance and the best uh, experience for the user whoever access this particular page so the second one is dynamic rendering so this is also one one of the type of server component but uh, it is little bit different from static so uh, in dynamic rendering um, the most this particular page is going to be rendered under under the, on the server but um there will be some dynamic content attached to this particular page let's look at the gmail example for dynamic rendering or suppose if you see this particular page so whoever logging into the gmail account 
So when they click here, they can see their own um, name here and it is uh, dynamic because this is not going to be same across uh, different users. Uh, since I logged in, I am able to see my name here at the same time, whoever logging into the, their, their Gmail, they will have their own name, so which is dynamic content. So out of this whole page, all the emails or anything which is specific to a, um, a user, so for that type of, uh, for this type of scenario, we have to go for the dynamic rendering. So if there is a scenario where you want to uh, dynamically load the portions of the page for that type of scenario, as well as to display the uh, content that is uh, related to a specific user. Uh, so for these two type of scenarios, we have to go for the dynamic rendering. And uh, advantages of dynamic rendering are it is pre-rendered on the server and uh, it will have a faster load time since JavaScript is passed on the server. Uh, uh, whatever the dynamic content that should be added or appended to this particular page will be done on the server side. So for that reason, it will give the performance, better performance. Uh, but uh, compared with static rendering, this is little bit slower. The third one is streaming rendering. So streaming allows the server to send to the browser a stream of HTML and JavaScript processed content to display on the page. And when the user navigate to uh, access more content, it will be continuously streaming from the server. So so that for this type of scenario, we have to use the streaming. Let's look at the Gmail example for streaming. So if you see this particular Gmail account, okay, where we have all these emails, okay, right now we are able to see around certain number of emails here on this particular first page. But uh, when you, oh, total of 15, 50 emails that I am seeing, when I click this older, okay, when I click this, okay, 50 more emails came and displayed on the page, okay. So on the first page load, when I, lo when I log into this particular Gmail, server is going to send only the first 50 emails to display, okay. And uh, when I click this next, that's when it will stream the leftover 50 emails from the server and send it to the, uh, the browser and it will render, okay. Again, 50 more. When I click next, again, it will send the 50 more uh, emails. So this is called a streaming. So for a web, for a kind of a web page where you have, I do, if you want to display the content like this, okay. Uh, which will span across multiple pages, but you don't want to get that total content on display on the page because it will lead to the performance issues. So for that reason, we are going to just stream the data like 50 emails per page. And uh, when you click next, it will go to the server and get the leftover 50. So for this type of scenario, you have to use uh, streaming rendering. So when to use stream rendering. So if you have a web page where you have um, scenario to display only the portions of the page and uh, based on the user navigation or uh, interaction with the page, you want to display more content. So for this type of scenario, you have to go for the streaming rendering.